Good evening, everyone. This meeting is now in session. This meeting is now in session. Let's start that again. There we go. This meeting is now in session. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Mr. Lander, would you like to lead us? You all figured out that the next step was to be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and good evening again. And uh, just to let you all know, Mr. Goldstein is um, on uh, vacation right now, so he will not be with us. We are at the point of announcements. On August 15th, we will hold a school board retreat from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at Washington Lee School Library. And on August 16th, the board will hold a closed meeting at 4 p.m. in room 101 of the Education Center. Board colleagues, do you have any announcements? And Dr. Murphy, are there any announcements today? Yes, just some uh, real quick ones. Um, and thank you. Summer school has been going on and ends on August 11th. And I've had the opportunity to get out to almost all of our sites, uh, just a few remaining. But it is going very well. So thank you very much to staff. Uh, that are out there. We did have a little bit of a wrinkle at our high school level with the HVAC at WNL. So thank you to the Yorktown folks. Uh, they were able to help us out as we made that transition. And we are now back at WNL, and the staff there has done an outstanding job. Barcroft teachers, we welcome back earlier this week. So our Barcroft calendar, uh, which is um, a, a bit accelerated, we've got students coming back to Barcroft on Tuesday, August the 1st. Uh, Dr. Murphy, Christy Murphy, is uh, proceeding well with our hiring, so we're on track there. We've got a number of back-to-school professional learning opportunities coming up on August the 10th, our admin conference. New teachers start on August the 21st, and then we've got our Festival of the Minds on August 21 through the 23rd. Just a reminder to our rising sixth grade parents, uh, to uh, look for the Tdap immunization so that we're on a line and ready to start on September 5th when all of our children return to school. So uh, a little bit more of the summer left, so enjoy it while we have the time. Great, thank you very much. And we are now ready to act on our consent agenda. May I have a motion? I so moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Four to zero. I would like to announce that as part of that consent agenda we just passed, the board made the following appointments. And I know we have several of our appointments here this evening. We'd like to recognize you. Let's start with Carolyn Clark. There she is. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. Yes, Carolyn Clark has 20 years of experience in education. She has worked as an outreach specialist teacher, school counselor, director of counseling, and assistant principal at the elementary and secondary level. Ms. Clark has a deep passion for creating equity for all students. A former member of the superintendent's committee on eliminating the achievement gap, she is a co-developer of the Color of Leadership Conference with Mr. Lander, and is working on her doctorate in school leadership with an emphasis on social justice and equity. Known for work that emphasizes students' strengths and focuses on involving staff, parents, and the community to support student success, Ms. Clark has demonstrated strong collaborative leadership. She brings experience that will support students and instruction as interim supervisor of minority achievement. Congratulations, Ms. Clark. <laughs> if, I am, if I understand correctly, you have some family here. We would love to meet them. Yes, there's a lot of family. Yes. <laughs> Well, Take your time. Introduce them. Take your time. We would love. Yes, please, please do. Why don't you start with your children? Okay. First, I introduce my lovely parents, um, my sister Jasper, my beautiful, wonderful sister, Amy Jackson, David Wilson, my son, Jared, Joseph, Jordan, and Jasmine. Yay! Yay. And Jasper, Jordan, yes. Also, <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, they're all here to support this wonderful opportunity. Congratulations. Uh, 
uh, Principal Wiggins from Gunston, as the uh, liaison to Gunston myself, I know that, that we're experiencing a little loss here, but we, we want you to know that we will do everything we can to support Gunston as, it, as we uh, uh, move forward and, and um, fill those big shoes. Dr. Cannon, can yes. I just, um, it, it doesn't do it justice to do it during the summer, so I'm gonna bring this back in September. But uh, Dr. Murphy, we have had some significant accomplishments instructionally across all groups at Gunston Middle School. And Dr. Wiggins and her team has been exceptional in reaching students of all different social economic groups, racial and language uh, backgrounds. So I want to congratulate publicly Dr. Wiggins and her team now, but uh, I really would like to celebrate her and her efforts uh, in September because everyone should know about uh, what we have uh, accomplished at Gunston because uh, I think it's, it's a wonderful accomplishment. So that is a credit to our team, uh, Mr. Seward back there who is also a candidate for a doctoral program down at the uh, College of William and Mary with a, a, a soon to be Dr. Clark back there. So I am very proud of this team and uh, it's nice to have uh, the best middle school in the county right around the corner from me. I, I'm sorry, and I have the best, uh, I see her, because she was getting ready to get on me. I have the best elementary school in the <laughs> county right around the corner from me. Also, <laughs> so I, I can't forget my, my Oak Ridge family, the owls, right? <laughs> okay. Um, and we're going to talk about that in the fall again, you said. In the All fall, right. we will bring that right. back. We'll make sure to, to celebrate as much as possible. We love hearing about how great our students, how well our students are doing all over Arlington. So next, we have the assistant principal, the new assistant principal um, at Ashlawn Elementary School, and it's Megan Neary. Megan? <laughs> and I see uh, you are here with our new principal of Ashlawn Elementary School, Brianna McLean, recently appointed. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Um, Megan Neary has eight years of experience in both special and general education with a strong under understanding of curriculum and an ability ah, let me start over that with a strong understanding of curriculum and an ability to mentor teachers she has served APS as an instructional lead teacher and special education lead teacher Ms. Neary is a charismatic creative leader who thinks outside the box she is conscientious in delivering curriculum to all learners and consistently implements best practices to improve learning for all students Focusing on the whole child, she demonstrates a strong belief in children, and her understanding of students' strengths and weaknesses allows her to build students' confidence and skills. With a deep respect for students, staff, and families, she will be an asset to Ashlawn Elementary School. Welcome. And next, we have the incoming assistant principal at Carlin Springs Elementary School, Melinda Phillips. Uh, did you bring, do you have guests here? Oh, yeah. We're your family. We're all your family. Absolutely, yes. It's Sorry. all good. <laughs> Let me read a little bit. Melinda Phillips has eight years teaching experience, understand, uh, including two years at Key Immersion. Ms. Phillips has a strong understanding of curriculum and has developed a response to intervention, multi-tier system of support database to monitor students' progress and make data-driven decisions. She is trained in the workshop model both in language arts and math, and has skills in written and oral communication in Spanish. Ms. Phillips has worked as a teacher and instructional lead teacher who listens attentively, communicates clearly, and builds positive relationships, ensuring that classroom instruction is culturally responsive and student backgrounds are valued. Thank you so much and welcome. I, I do want to also thank Eileen Delaney. Eileen, if you wouldn't mind standing, Eileen is our new principal at Carlin Springs. We appointed her at the last meeting, but thank you for coming out as well. I think the fact that our principals are here this evening with assistant principals or the, that we have folks in the audience that are support systems does not go unnoticed and is very much appreciated and it sends a very strong message about our family and how supportive we are of one another. So Eileen, thank you very much for being here, uh, especially as a new team member here to APS. Absolutely, yes, thank you so much. Um, 
And speaking of which, um, we're going on to the incoming assistant principal at Oak Ridge Elementary School. We have Ines Al-Majid. <laughs> and I believe you are also joined here with uh, Dr. Wright, the principal at Oak Ridge. <laughs> as well as, let me read a little bit about you and then if you have a family you'd like to introduce, that would be great. Um, Ines Al-Majid has over 10 years teaching experience, much of the time as an English as a second language teacher, ESOL teacher. She has a master's degree in ESOL and is trained in the workshop model that supports APS's English language arts and math curriculum. At Campbell, she has served as lead ESOL teacher and school testing coordinator, working closely with the administration and teachers in the review of data to determine how to best meet students' instructional needs and teacher pedagogy. She is a problem solver who works collaboratively to ensure all students are challenged and engaged. By modeling and co-teaching lessons, she has provided professional learning and coaching to teachers. Her work experiences clearly demonstrate her commitment to students and supporting their academic success. Thank you so much, Ms. Al-Majid. We're very happy to have you. And I believe you have at least someone to introduce to us. Yes, absolutely. Very happy to have you all. Arlington, Arlington Public School student, I hope. Yes. Which school? I'm sorry? Which school? Campbell. Awesome. Fantastic. Great. Happy She's to going to transfer, you. though, right? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, we're really happy to have uh, so many of you able to come out um, to celebrate you. We do have one additional appointment that was made. She is not able to be here, but we're very happy to welcome her, to, to, to have her continue with us. Um, the new IB coordinator at Washington Lee High School will be Julie Cantor. Julie Cantor has worked for APS for 17 years as a teacher and for the two years and, 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 and for two years has been in successful as instructional lead teacher and assistant principal at Washington Lee High School. As instructional lead teacher, she's been instrumental in developing block scheduling and generals period, and her caring and sincere attitude has made her one of Washington Lee's most valuable teachers and administrators. She has a natural way of reaching out to children and creating environments that are conducive to success and accomplishment. She is a firm believer in being inclusive and regularly promotes a positive learning environment that fosters student and teacher success. Ms. Cantor has worked closely with administrators and teachers throughout the school, including the IB program. It is without a doubt that Ms. Cantor's skills and knowledge of Washington Lee and the IB program will lead the school and the program to the next level. We're very happy to have um, made that appointment. Okay, it is now time for citizen comment on non-agenda items. Uh, Ms. Mercado, do we have speakers? Okay, so, all right, so um, that'll come up later, so I'll do the speaker guidelines then, okay. What's that? Hi. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. There they all went. <laughs> okay, we are now ready for our information items. Our first item is on the purchase of property on North Culpeper Street. Dr. Murphy, would you like to introduce this item? Yes, I will uh, do so very briefly, but also give a little bit of a rationale. From time to time, uh, we watch very closely the real estate market of uh, surrounding our schools because if properties become available uh, based on how some of our schools have access to and from the school, we look at those as opportunities either for emergency vehicles uh, to come and go or service vehicles uh, to facilitate just the general operation of the school. That is what this particular item is about. It's in relationship to Glebe Elementary School, and I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Chadwick to give you a little bit more background, but that's the rationale and why we're bringing forward this to the board. Thank you, Dr. Murphy. And I, I have, uh, we've asked um, Ms. Peterson to join us because we've done this together. Just like we did the lease for um, Sequoia, it's a joint effort and we've collaborated on it. And even though, you know, we're purchasing property, it's kind of, it, I think it's setting an example that we can do that. And we're very pleased that this makes sense for us. So. The situation at Glebe is that there is actually no real vehicular access to the site other than through the Capital Life Church property via an easement. 
uh, we became aware that this property was uh, on the market in uh, June um, in working with, in our collaboration with the um, County Real Estate Bureau and actually the chairman of the FAC, Greg Greeley, also found it for us. Um, the purchase of this property would permit us to uh, have access for emergency vehicles, as Dr. Murphy mentioned, to and from the APS pro property. Culpeper Street is fairly narrow, so it would not work as a main entrance to the school, and it's also on the other side of the field, but it does allow us that emergency access and a pedestrian access as well directly from the street. Um, Real Estate Bureau worked with us very closely on this and, in fact, did most of the hard work and we agreed a purchase price of $525,000 with the owner. Uh, the site is, let me see if I can get this in the right place. Where is it? Okay, got it, thank you. So this is the site here. It's just one single residential property. Site's kind of around the wrong way. It's long and narrow. We will be demolishing the property, uh, making a curb cut and having a small area of grass paved for emergency vehicles to stand on. Um, and it will allow a direct pedestrian path here rather than this one that goes between two hedges. Uh, Capital Life property is the one on Glebe Road. I've lost my... Oh, thank you. Uh, anyway, it's on Glebe Road. Um, there's one other little pedestrian access off the road to the north. Under school board policy, um, approval is required um, with, by the school board of the purchase. And um, the recommendation is that you authorize the chair to execute the contract as approved as to form that is actually here now and authorize the superintendent or myself to sign related documents in connection with closing on the purchase. Leslie? Uh, we're also recommending that the funding for the purchase be taken from the capital reserve. Uh, the purchase price is $525,000 plus there will be some additional closing costs associated with that purchase as well as the site improvement costs related to demoing the house and putting in that curb cut that we don't expect to exceed an additional $50,000. So for a total of about 575 max. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Mercado, do we have speakers on this item? Yes, we have one speaker, Mr. Eric Opp. Okay, um, let me begin by reading the guidelines. Sure. Uh, the, board, the school board welcomes public comment. Generally, school board members do not respond to comments during the meetings. Speakers must submit a speaker slip to the clerk before the agenda item they wish to speak on is called. Each speaker may speak for up to three minutes. There is a timer to help you keep track of your time and speakers should conclude the remarks when the buzzer sounds. All comments should address a matter related to Arlington Public Schools. Speakers should be courteous and address their comments to the entire school board. Speakers are called in the order in which they sign up. If you have written comments, please give them to the clerk. Um, and I would say we would ask audience to refrain from applauding, but since there are so few people here, I'm not sure that's going to be an issue this, this evening. Um, let's begin with our speakers. Speaker. So before I begin my remarks, I want to put them in context. I've been an off and on county resident for 55 years, a permanent resident for 30 years. My son is a product of the Arlington County Public Schools. And unlike more, my more fortunate neighbors, my property taxes have gone up literally 7% per annum over the 22 years that I've lived in my house. So as you can imagine, I'm somewhat sensitive to county expenditures. And when I saw this on the agenda, I did want to comment. As a taxpayer, I do want to take some issue with the purchase of a property, given the fact that uh, Mr. Goldstein had recently come to the Donaldson Run Civic Association and provided a whole plan and rationale for the fact that there are, and I believe the number is 1,500, but I'm citing that from memory, additional students that need to be housed in Arlington County Public Schools over the next decade, requiring, of course, a large expenditure in terms of capital and capital improvements to the schools. So my objections to this uh, transaction are threefold. First, I realized that $525,000 or $575,000 may be a very small amount in the grand scheme of things, but I took a walk down the property this morning, and if you think about $525,000 and then paving, by the time you're done, you're probably well over the $575,000 
cost more into many more hundreds of thousands of dollars by the time the project is complete. And from my perspective, given what needs to be spended in, expended in the schools in the future, there are better uses for this money than buying another access to Glebe Elementary. Second, the last sale of the property was recorded in January, and in January an investor bought it for $400,000. Now I would love to make a 30% uh, return on my investment over four months, so I think in some ways the price of $525,000, while realistic to the market, is excessive for the property given the fact that an investor has bought it. And finally, if the property is paved and paved to the parking lot, you've lost a lot of landscaping, you've gone through a soccer field, and you've paved over a very large star storm sewer, which of course will run a whole lot of money to fix. Uh, and, and so I think it in the best interest of the county and the taxpayers not to enter into this transaction. And I hope the school board does not approve the transaction. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, board colleagues, do you have questions or comments? Oh, for, for staff. I, I, sure, uh, John, uh, Mr. Chadwick, I'd like to just inquire. Um, the, my understanding is that this will, um, the $50,000 will cover the cost of the demolition of the building as well as putting in the uh, base f upon which the fire trucks can drive only in an emergency purpose and there's no uh, plan to pave that area or any of the play, play area, right? That is correct. The only paving we will be putting is, is permeable paving, the type that grass grows through. The curb side, in the curb uh, area. Yes. Yeah. Additional uh, questions, comments? Okay, um, thank you to our commenters. Thank you to Mr. Chadwick, Ms. Peterson for your presentations. Uh, this is slated for board action at our August uh, school board meeting. Okay, uh, the next item, we will hear about a parking license agreement for Fleet Elementary School. Dr. Murphy. Mr. Chadwick, I'm gonna come back to you for this as we move forward with the construction of Fleet Elementary. Yes. Um, as you know, Fleet Elementary is being constructed on a parking lot. And so the parking will be um, not available during construction for teachers and users of the um, school. So um, as was foreseen in our um, budget for the project and the numbers we put together, we will be leasing some parking spaces for staff. Uh, we brought to you a church, Capital Life Church, for the same thing about, um, I think at the last board meeting, this is um, with Faith Lutheran Church, which is the, the um, if you're looking at the bridge from the Jefferson side, it's the church on the left, to lease another 10 spaces, and we will be bringing another lease to you for the remaining spaces that we need later this summer. Um, total cost for that will be $8,000, paid over 20, 20 months, and as I mentioned, it's incorporated into the budget and an anticipated expense as part of the project. Um, so the recommendation is the, the chair be authorized to execute the parking license agreement, and of course it's been reviewed and approved by uh, APS Legal Counsel. Okay, um, Ms. Mercado, any speakers? Okay, board colleagues, any questions or comments? Ms. The Ms. only Dorn. question I have is just a reminder that when we get to winter months that the path between that bridge and the school is going to have to be maintained for safety purposes. It's not, and the yes. bridge is very, very slippery. So yes. just to think ahead to that. Uh, and just for clarification purposes, we have, this will be our second lease for leasing parking spaces yes. within the school? Yes, okay. and we'll be bringing one more to you that's in the works. Okay, and uh, how many more spaces do we need to obtain? Are we on track? Um, the that? next one will be um, for 100 spaces some, one, and more, actually. Okay. We need 60 of those for staff. The okay. rest will be for construction workers. Great, wonderful, thank you. Can I just add on that my understanding is we're also using the eastern parking lot um, at Jefferson for staff parking. The, the, the 
and it's being restriped. That's I think I've noticed that. Uh, no, we are not we are using not, that parking lot. Parks and Recreation has not been able to make that available to us. The one at the far end, yes. The one I'm sorry, I'm misreading you. I meant the, the one where the houses used to be. Yes, we can use that. That's one so that we'll because it's striped and says that now, and yes. I think it, it yes. looks like that's a very generous. Yes. That's a shorter walk, but also um, I'll note that that's also a sidewalk that we would consistently get complaints yes. about it not being shoveled in time for kids to yes. walk on. So now that we'll be asking staff to walk on it and kids, yes. we, I think that that's been addressed somewhat, but we yes. might want to really think about that for the winter months. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you, Mr. Chadwick. And again, that is going to come back to us for action at our next board meeting. We have one final item today, and it is a new school board policy, policy 10-4.2, electronic participation in meetings by individual board members. Um, and this one I am going to briefly discuss because this is a school board policy, so we are proposing it kind of ourselves. Um, and this came up, um, this is a new piece of the state code, state law has allowed for the idea of electronic participation and in order to do that, we have to adopt our own policy. Um, it does come up from time to time that board members for um, a variety of very legitimate reasons cannot be at a meeting in person. And so we thought um, it would be helpful if we, if we went ahead and adopted this policy. It is very much um, prescribed by state code. So there's nothing creative we have done um, in the policy. And this policy draft proposed policy is posted on board docs um, for the public to review. But the basic, the highlights are simply that um, if a board member cannot um, attend a meeting due to a personal matter or a temporary per or permanent disability or medical condition, um, they can make the request to participate electronically and they are limited, we are all limited to doing this twice a year. So this is not something that you can become a, um, a remote, regularly remote board member. Um, the procedure is that you make the request at least a day before the, on or the day of the meeting. Um, the chair approves the request in accordance with the policy. If denied, um, the board member may appeal to the entire board. Um, the minutes shall include all the information required by the code. A quorum must be physically present at the meeting and comments made um, through the electronic transmission must be audible to all in attendance. Um, and again, there are other details, all very um, directly derived from state code um, that are in this proposed policy. That is the very brief summary. And um, board colleagues, if you have comments you'd like to make or um, questions that I'll do my best to answer. It, does the county board not already have a similar policy in practice? Yes, they do. That is a good question. Yes, they do. I believe they do. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm asking a rhetorical <laughs> question. They do. We're a bit behind. Other school boards do this, and it's one that we keep saying we're going to get to, but we're finally getting to it because we really had to get to it. So thank you for doing this. Anyone else? Okay. Um, and again, uh, we're open for comments, um, and, uh, and we will be taking this up for action at our August board meeting, which is on August 17th. Uh, board colleagues, is there any new business? Okay, seeing none, the board will now reconvene in closed session. <laughs>